On this episode, a message from the heavens. Don't be afraid. We encounter the biblically accurate shmup enemy pattern. Yeah! <laughs> and I know what you are probably asking yourself right now. What kind of brain is this guy abusing? Hi everybody, this is Christian from LaserDesk Academy. Welcome. The advanced shmup tutorial is what we're doing today. And uh, yeah, we're working on a tough problem, but I think we have a really cool solution. Uh, the problem that we're working on, just to remind you, is that we want to have to simulate the enemy movement in our schedule editor. So we have like a schedule editor, um, which is kind of like a preview of what our game will look like later on. But enemies are not really moving, they're just static. And we want to simulate their behavior patterns. We want to actually see how they will fly out. And um, in order to do that, what we did is we, in our enemy behavior editor, we are actually saving how the enemies are moving into like a file. We have like a trail that the enemies are describing. And what I want to do today is get this trail to show up in our schedule editor. That's the, the goal for the day. Easy as pie. Load sked it. Uh, and then let's open up a second window. All right, so this is the schedule editor and on the left we have the brain editor. And now let me let me get this thing out because on we our, our job on the brain editor is done. Now we're moving to the schedule editor. Show cursor. We oh, we have all this figured out. Now the path. We want to draw, load the trails in schedule editor. We're going to show the trails in schedule editor. And actually, let me let me set up um, a path, a, a potential future. After we show the trails in schedule editor, I want to actually show a sprites instead of the dots, right? This you show the sprites instead of uh, instead of dots. Uh, show just one sprite. Is good would be next step and then interpolate. We're gonna describe. We're gonna talk about what that means in a second. Um, I just want to add first import those trails, and it's an easy thing. We're just gonna copy this line here, and we're gonna just include those trails in the schedule editor. Bam, done. Now there is a bit of a processing that we need to do for those trails because it's a three-dimensional array. Which is unusual for our setup, so we're just gonna we're just gonna do the processing here. Process trails, cool, and that's done. Now uh, there is a little, one little detail when I'm drawing the stuff. There, mm, I want to copy this out, and I want to put it into the draw. Should I put it in draw BG? You know what, let me just put it in here. I'm, I'm going to comment this out. Let's comment this out. Uh, and, and we're going to figure out what, what that does later. But for now, let's just close that brain edit. I think we have everything that we needed from brain edit. All right, back in here. Let's just run and see if there's any problems. Not that I can tell. That's good. That's sweet. All right. Let's, let's get this. Let's get this. Let's just, let's just let's just figure this out. So let me see where we're drawing the enemies. Where are we drawing the enemies? Draw table. Draw. Is that draw BG? So here is we draw. Ah, I see. Uh, draw BG means also draw the enemies. Uh huh. And here we're drawing the enemy. Okay. So let me create a new function. And let's call this draw tray. And then let's let's say um, let's just say n. Let's just draw the trail of this enemy. Uh, right, 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 right. Now for this enemy, we actually don't need the meta. We don't need the meta. Um, we do need to find out the trails for that enemy. Um, and that's something that we, let me show you where we have spawn. Do we have spawn end somewhere? We have the sked. Okay, we do have an end sked here. So let's go like 
local my sched equals let's just grab that and we're gonna grab the schedule from the from the from the enemy and that schedule should have like a spawning location for the enemy right how do, how how have we even managed so far yeah we have this gen ends function that generates the enemies yeah 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 see we're generating the enemies and that will create like little enemy objects and um and that's how we're drawing the enemies so the enemies are actually not very really persistent objects they are being created every single frame um which is not ideal we have to think about this a little bit so maybe just drawing the trails for each enemy might not be wise there is there is a um, we, we have to think about this a little bit <clears throat> but for now um yeah we need to figure out uh, the just figure out the the type of enemy it is um so let me let me look at gen ends there's sked uh let me add to this let me just add the brain let's just save the brain in in the uh, here in the in the enemy object uh there's the end lip right that's 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 the end that we have here so let's go n dot uh which entry is the brain entry it's the third third entry right so let's go brain three okay yeah so we're just now saving the brains inside those any up ob enemy objects that we created and then when we're drawing them we can be like okay sure uh local my trails uh, we actually don't we might okay then we, we, let's let's keep the objects around it's, it's it's okay and my trails equals brain trails square brackets brain right we're getting the trails that correspond to the brain of the enemy that we are about to draw and then we're going to loop through all of the entries in that in that trail and just do the piece it now the problem that we have here is we also want to um, make the piece it relative to where the enemy was spawned um, mm -mm -mm -mm. where was the enemy spawned how do we know that uh, it's three and four yeah three and four so my sked yes 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 my sked three my sked four boom will this work who knows it will not or will it though it's 11 no it's correct oh we're not it's just not drawing the trail uh yeah sure let's just draw the trails let's just draw it still not working right because we go looping through the cur trails but it's actually supposed to be my trails let's go to cur trails that allows us to be like <gasps> <laughs> yes 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 okay yes yes excellent excellent <laughs> now we're drawing the dots we're loading the stuff and drawing the dots this is a load which loading the trails and sketch it we're showing the trails and sketch it there is a bit of a problem though the trails, trails never disappear that's the problem because the enemies never disappear we need to think of some kind of cutoff problem. Um, so let's let's consider the cutoff. There, there needs to be some kind of cutoff at some point, right? It'd be like, okay, now now we need to cut, uh, not not show the the, uh, the trails anymore, not show the enemies anymore, because the enemies should be off the screen at this point. And we can actually use the trails to figure out the cutoff. But um, that's not what I'm, I'm I'm I'm. We do have the trails. So that's great. Um, show sprites instead of dots. So now the idea is that every time we have a little dot here, instead of drawing a dot, we could also draw the enemy sprite, right? So let's try that. In fact, no, no. Let, let's, so let's instead of the P set, <clears throat> instead of the P set, 
let us do like the, this MSPR. It's gonna be a lot of enemies, <laughs> don't, but don't worry. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Local NX equals, well, let's um, save the X and the Y value in separate uh, helper variables for now. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. It's the uh, biblic biblically, biblically uh, uh, accurate enemy trail. Um, and X and Y. Let me let me real, check real quick if, if this still works. Yeah. Easy. No problem. Now I want to actually draw the enemy sprites. Didn't work. Why? Oh yeah, because we want to have an X. Uh, wait, 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 wait. That's that's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> yes. Um. Okay. Yeah. This this looks this looks funky. Um, but hear me out. This may be really good. Um, yeah. Okay. So this is obviously not what what we want. This this is not this is not viable. This is not cool. Um, but something that might be cool is um, we're gonna actually take this stuff out. Uh, I don't want to draw the trail anymore. And we're gonna think about something else when we generate the enemies, because right now uh, show just one sprite is next step, right? Um, Okay, we're showing the sprites of the dots, but now we just want to show one sprite, right? We have this enemy that flows and that, that moves down the screen, right, so far. Instead of having the enemy just move down the screen as you scroll, what I want to do is now pick a dot on that trail and just show that dot instead and draw the enemy on that instead of the dot. But for that, we need to set it up a little bit different. Um, we need to um, uh, take those trails into account when we are generating the enemy objects. So let me get this out. This was this was good for now. Oops, I did something wrong. Uh, let me get this out. Let me comment this out. I'm thinking of the following. So when, let me go to gen ends. Where is it, where is it? There. So here is where we're generating the enemies, right? So, um, Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now, here's where we are calculating the position of the enemy. Right? Here's where we calculate the position of the enemy. Let me paste this in here, the draw trail function. Uh, let me get the trail in when we're generating the enemies. Uh -huh. Curve trails, that's good. This stuff is something that we're gonna th think about later. So first we're gonna get the enemy from the enemy library, we're gonna get the animation, we're gonna get the trails based on the enemy's brain. And now uh, let me just do a, like a simple variant of this where we're just gonna draw the first entry in that trail. So when we're de thinking about the position where we're gonna put the enemy, we're gonna put the, the enemy at where the where it has been spawned. I'm gonna think about, yeah, let me, let me, I'm just really nervous about this. <laughs> so let me, because I'm messing around with stuff that I might forget and that is gonna be difficult to find it out. So, okay, so right now we're, this is where the enemy will spawn every frame uh, or where we're gonna draw the enemy every frame. And I want to, like right now, the enemy will be drawn where it spawns. Uh, we can actually save this and run this, and I'm going to show you real quick. The enemy is now not moving. It's just peering at, where the, at the position where it spawned. And we have some enemies that are spawning off screen, and we don't even see them because they're off screen. Okay. Now I want to add to the X and Y position the trails, uh, the entries from the trails. I'm just going to be like really simple. I'm just going to add the first entry from that. Uh, from our cur trails. 
uh, and um, each entry in our trail is, has, is a little array. Uh, then the first entry in that array is x, the second entry in that array is 2. Okay, so it's something like this. Now, this technically... Ooh, the curl trace is nil. Right, because we're getting here n brain. Ah, right, but the brain is actually n3. Like this. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, this, this is why we're doing things step by step. Okay, so right now nothing changed. It's just like, because most of the time the first entry in the trail is just zero, zero, because that's where the enemy spawns. Uh, we could go like, um, let's show the fifth entry. And it's like, oh, okay. Now it's spawning the enemy a little bit further down the line because it's taking an entry, uh, like a one, uh, the fifth, fifth green dot on, on that entry. So now I basically want to just like advance and pick a, a trail entry that corresponds to the current scroll value. How are we going to do this? So we're going to basically take this. We're going to calculate how many frames this enemy has been on the screen. Local age. And let's go NH. This is how many frames this enemy has been on the screen. Uh, this is going to be scroll minus schedule one. Schedule one is when the enemy spawns. Scroll is how many time, how many frames we scrolled. Uh, and just like to, because we want to really do the step by step, step by step, step by step, uh, we're gonna do h equals an h. And I want to actually see the h. When we're drawing the enemy, I want to actually print the h on the enemy. Uh, what color? We're going to print it in white. I want to see the edge of the enemy. Which is all just debugging stuff. Okay, this enemy is 7. On the frame where it spawns, it's H, it's 1. Should be technically 0, huh? But I don't mind. So when it spawns, it's 1, and then it continues and so forth. The, the fact that this one is... Oh yeah, because we already did a plus one. Okay, it's, it's fine. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, let, let's, okay, so let's just delete it so we can see. Okay, so uh, in the frame where it spawns, it's, it's, the H is zero, and then as we continue scrolling up, um, the H increases. So now I want to uh, associate this H with an entry in the trail. And we know that we, when we're recording the trails, we're recording the, the trails every five frames. So for example, when the age is zero, it should get us the first entry. When the age is two, it should get us the first entry. When the age is five, that's where we want to have the second entry, right? So let's go, let's go plus one actually, and local, Trail age, that's the age in trails, so to speak. And that is going to be n age modulo 5 plus 1. That's why we actually don't need the plus 1 here. Modulo is actually wrong. It's not supposed to be modulo, it needs to be um, this division. Uh, it's the it's divided and integer, right? So this trail age, we can we should be able to just plug it into into this, and this should get us. Uh, this should give us a preview. Oh, you can see it's progressing along the trail. It's progressing along the trail, baby. Now there is going to be a problem. You can see it in a second. Eventually, we will run out of trail. You know what happens then? Then we shouldn't show the enemy anymore, right? Like then, then it's we're done, right? So what we then can do? So we, let's do this calculation before we even draw it, right? Um, so, like because we're checking this here, right? Like if schedule is smaller than scroll, right? So we could do this kind of. Well, let's do it like a two-stage process, maybe, huh? Uh, and this is something that we can do later. 
Okay, so this is basically checking if, if we're shown something and we're gonna go like if trail age is greater than curd trails, hashtag curd trails. No, if it's actually smaller or equals, so we're checking the opposite. If, if the age is smaller or equals, then we're actually adding that, that enemy to our list. Okay. Okay. Let's try that. You can already tell where this is going. It is, is, isn't that great? It already looks like when I scroll through, it's, it looks really nice. Now the enemies will at some point will just plop out of existence. You can see how they just like disappear, right? Uh, the reason why does it disappear is that we record the trails only on the screen. Like once the enemy leaves the screen in the brain editor, it just, um, we stop recording the trails. And, but we're spawning the enemies not where we're spawning them on the brain editor. We're spawning the enemies here, we're spawning them off screen. So we don't have enough trails to actually make them go all the way down out of the screen. But that's okay. I I'm, 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 I'm just want to see you know, how this, this entire thing plays out. And you can see that, well, we have to see if this works. But if, if this is correct, that it means that if we don't shoot down this first enemy, we should, also, we should already see the V formation coming in before this enemy leaves the screen. Let's see if this actually is true. We're gonna save this. Just like to see if this, the preview is correct. So this is the first enemy. This is not correct. I'm miffed about the, the fact that this is not correct. Why is this not correct? This might have to do something with the scroll speed. Let, let me look at this, this up. Good thing that we checked, good thing that we checked. So by the way, the cutoff is basically done. Um, yeah, because we are, hmm, this is the thing, the scroll value, uh, there's a scroll speed, right, at which we are scrolling, and it's not the same thing as um, the frames of the animations that we are having, right? So what is the scroll speed again? I think it was like 0 0.2, right? There, 0 0.2, yeah, that's a scroll speed. Okay, so when we're showing the pass, we need to, yeah, yeah, see, the problem is that we are using this scroll value to calculate the age, but that scroll value is, it's it's take, taking, like it's keeping track of how many uh, pixels the background has scrolled. That's not the same thing as how many frames have elapsed of the game. And the enemies are working in frame space. The animations that we have are frame based. And the scroll speed, that is working in pixels of scrolling. So we have to translate one into the other one. Um, so here the NH is basically what we have to do is we have to multiply. Or divide by 0 0.2. So it's like multiplied, right? And that should get us the, the real age. So now the age is very different, but you can see that this looks more, this looks more like what I expect. In order to test this, we're gonna actually create a new enemy. And you know, this might this might cause the game to, to crash, but we're gonna see. So here, here's where an, an enemy, and the, the moment where it leaves the screen, uh, I want to spawn a new enemy. All right, and then let's move that. Let's just move it into the center or like, let's move it to the side here. So what should happen now is we do, this new enemy should just like poof into existence by the time that second enemy leaves the screen, right? So let's see if this works. Uh, let's export. Here's the old enemy. Boom. That's that's the ticket, laddie. That's how it's supposed to work. Yes, good. So now this schedule editor is actually a very accurate representation of how these things will play out in the game. This is very accurate, actually. And you know what? This might be enough. I was thinking of maybe doing a bit of an interpolation 
But I realize that maybe it's actually not really necessary, right? It might be not really necessary. This is very unnecessary because the scroll speed, we, in, in this editor, we're jumping always by one pixel of scrolling. And that is uh, so many frames that the resolution of this, these trails is enough, right? Because we're always jumping by one. It takes how many? Did we make it so that it lines up correctly? Yeah, because it always point two. So every five frames, we're jumping to the next pixel. And that's exactly the, the resolution at which we're recording the, the trails anyway. So actually, we don't need the interpolation. Huh, interesting, huh? Oh man, we, we are smart. We are so smart. It's almost as if I planned everything. Something that might be fun is whenever I select an enemy, what might be even fun to show the trail? We do, do have the uh, cutoff, we're showing, showing just one sprite. We don't need the interpolation, we realize, because we don't have the kind of resolution in the editor that requires an interpolation. Interpolation would mean that, um, like if our scrolling was finer, if we were able to scroll in between values, then we would see the enemy jump to the next location would be like really, really jumpy. And then it's, you can interpolate between those two values on the trails to get like an intermediate value. But we don't need that. This is good enough. Oh man, this is actually really cool. <laughs> I'm actually really hyped about this. This is fun. Why why do, are we having like such weird values? It's like 0 0.018. That's something that bugs me. It's funny how we're dividing by 0 0.2 and then multi and like multiplying by two and then adding. So it kind of evens out, right? So we can just like not do it. Does is that will that work? Yeah. Oh man, it just happens to work. And now we're getting better values for it. now we don't because I think there was a rounding error. We divide multiplied and divided again. And that cancelled each other. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool, cool. It just so happens to work out. Now we we absolutely can't change the scroll value anymore because that will just ruin our preview in here. But otherwise it's good. Wow. Wow. Something I want, wanted to maybe do is to, um, when I'm selecting an enemy, instead of just, I, I want to actually show the, the, the trail as a preview. So let me, let me get this one out. This was, and let's do, put it in a draw function. So when we are hovering over an enemy, like here, uh, no, not sales kit. Yeah, here. If we are um, selected this, this enemy, then I want to actually draw a trail of that enemy. We, we're gonna keep this function around. Let's see if this works. <laughs> okay, not what I wanted. Um, I want to actually use the P set again. Um, but I want to maybe use a different color. Uh, let's do color seven. Because the 11, the problem is the 11 works really good against the blue, but might be difficult later. Oh man, this is, this is just not, not, this is not causing any joy. I mean, okay, this is in, along those, uh, those lines anyway. So, okay, so let, let's do the real test here. Let's click on one and let's change this to a different enemy type. And now it completely disappears. Okay, and now what, what now? Oh, this just probably has the same. What about this one? Whoa. W what? So this enemy type, what is this enemy type doing even? I don't even know where it moves. It's like completely offset from the front spawn. What kind of brain is this guy using? So this should be brain number two. This should be brain number two. What is brain number two doing? What is happening here? It should fly to the side. And then down. Oh, is that the problem? Is, is because we're spawning somewhere and it just flies to the side? Let me see. Let, let, me, let me spawn a new enemy here. Bam. Move. Oh, do we have a way of moving with a mouse? Yeah, we have. 
okay? Uh, and then we're gonna change it to number two. Oh yes. See now 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 we can see yeah yeah okay. It was just like not it was a weird it was a weird enemy for this kind of um, uh, for this spawning location. Yeah, you can see. Oh, you can totally see how how those enemies are moving. Oh, this is so nice. Let me create a different uh, enemy brain. So I set it up so that the blue enemy will have now brain number three associated. Oh, you can totally tell, right? You can tell how this enemy just moves. Oh, that's so nice. Um, let's move it so we can, now we can tell that you can like really position these enemies. So for example, if I want to position it so that it, it's just visible to the side when it, when it returns, I can, I, I know exactly where I need to position it so it flies, so it flies to the side. Um, and then, then I want to confirm and I want to make sure that when it appears, it's actually uh, off screen. So let's move. Okay, so now it will be totally off screen. Now let's export, load, yes, yes, <laughs> and then we should see the blue enemy, yes, oh, <laughs> oh, it's so good. Oh uh, yeah, this, this totally works. This totally works. You know what? We have a whole bunch of stuff to do here, but um, before we do that, let us check out what the master plan says. All right, so let's go to the master plan and let's do like an update. So what did we achieve for this third goal, this great wall of schmups? We did good previews of enemy formations. We did the brain system link up. We need the bullet. We did the bullet system hookup in the brain enemy brain system. We created the bullet pattern system. All of this stuff is done. These uh, enemies crawling in sync with background. We don't have background enemies yet. Although we can recreate them by just making them move at a speed of zero point two. That will basically make them background enemies. So maybe we don't need that right now. But these are just small things. Um, update uh, splash and master. So there's maybe a way of how we can do the splash and muzzle animations differently. Although I think the splash and muzzle animations are now particles anyway. So maybe that is actually done anyway. A brain system left over boss location lock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, boss location lock means that there we want to have a go to uh, boss go to. Um, yeah, we need to uh, or enemy go to. Location. I'm going to be really clear because I'm not looking at this too often. Okay, you know what? <laughs> you know what? I think we we are, are we are finished with the great wall of maps. I think we are finished with the great wall of maps. I think something that we can do now. Third goal is a workflow um, test run workflow test run um, and workflow test run I'm gonna formulate a goal I want to create a few seconds of game Let's put down, I have a, let's put down like 50 seconds. I want to use placeholder, the placeholder graphics that we already have and just like try some interesting um, enemy patterns, bullet patterns, and try to put them together in the editor to create a little bit of, a, of gameplay, a bit of a level, 50 seconds of, of level, and just see how all those systems work out and what kind of features I still need. I, this is just gonna be testing out all the things if they line up correctly, if there's some kind of features that I still need and so forth. I can already tell that there's some features that I need. So I, 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 will, I will do like a before step, some things that I need before we get there. 
And that is going to be auto save. <laughs> no, I'm not going to put it put it off any longer. Uh, I'm going to put auto save in here. I don't think we need the go to command actually. We might not. Uh, we're not, not going to prioritize the go to command just now. Uh, this is also not going to be in, important. Uh, oh, I, did, I, I, I edit. I, I want to keep this around. I want to. I want to keep track of the things that we did at, at any point. Small things. Enemy scrolling. Uh, maybe we not need the background enemies. Um, and this is, I don't know, this is just like a question mark. Um, yeah, I do definitely before we do the, um, we, before we do the workflow test run, like just as a prep work, uh, I do want to in, in integrate the autosave uh, feature. Another thing I want to maybe integrate is, um, I want to have music. So I did some interviews with Schmapp developers and uh, there were some really good Schmapp interviews. You should check them out. I mean, maybe post a link here. Um, and a lot of the Schwab developers I talked to, when they, I asked them how they designed the level, they said music was a very important feature for them in order to kind of like decide what to do next in order to structure the level. Uh, hearing the music is kind of like gives you like a set some impulses, creative impulses for what to do now. And for that, I want to have music sound effects. Um, so, so yeah, these are going to be the next steps before we before we approach this, and then we want to create um, we want to create the the gameplay. Create a few seconds of gameplay, and then I want to collect identify needs. I want to identify what I need to change about my systems, what I need to change about my editors. The things I need, the things that I, when I was creating the level, I felt I really needed. I want to uh, like do a test run, see what I need, and write down the things I need, and maybe already implement it while I'm doing it, if it's really urgent, if I feel like, oh, no, this is just not working because this is missing, right? Then I will need it, I do it immediately. Or things that maybe, okay, I need in the long run, I need before I actually start making the game, um, I will write them down. So identifying needs is a very important aspect. This is the master plan. This is the. This is no longer the third goal. This is the fourth goal. The fourth goal. We have achieved. We have achieved. We have climbed over the great wall of shmaps. We have all the tools that we need in order to create a great shmap. They are not perfect tools, and there's like little problems that we need to figure out. Uh, but we have like a first version of our tool set that allows us to do the thing that was previously impossible. And with that, let's go to the doggy zone. That's right, the doggy zone. And the doggy zone, I mean, it's probably gonna be, I don't know if it's gonna be the last doggy zone. I think I, we need to kind of send down the doggy zone because it, you know, this is episode 60 something. Like at this point, I think you're, you're kind of like know where this is going. And usually in a doggy zone, I'm already always talking about the things that I'm gonna be doing in the next episode. So we're now transitioning more to the devlog phase of it. But the last doggy zone, before we go full on devlog, is I want to, to think about, I want to just integrate the autosave feature and then maybe add some music stuff and then start creating the gameplay yourself. You want to test the tools and do let me know what kind of tools and features you thought were important while you were trying out this tool set. What, or when you create your own shmup, what kind of tools did you think was important that I don't have yet? So we can maybe pull our resources. All right, that is maybe the final dog is on. But it is not the final part at the end of each episode where I say a big thank you. And I'm just saying thank you every episode because, again, this is a big deal for me that uh, so many people are supporting this crazy endeavor here on uh, coffee.com slash lasers. Thank you so much for your support, guys. And also, I wanted to read out a question or, yeah, I think, that Turtle Quitty said on episode 58. I position go to surprise. It's only now that you want it. Haha. <laughs> now, the question is, will you want to add a way to change the face of the boss or maybe it's spawn minion ways? Excellent suggestion. Excellent suggestions. We can already put it down in the knees, actually. Um, we can ask, do we need boss? Phases. Um, spawn 
that's exactly the kind of things that I want to figure out by just doing a test run, by just creating a test boss pattern, by just creating some test things and seeing what I need in my tool set. Uh, with the boss phases, is we can do multiple boss phases, multiple attacks, right? But I think what Turtle Quitty, we did some back and forth, what Turtle Quitty said here is whether we want to have something like when the boss has lost a certain amount of health, then it changes to a different phase, right? Uh, that's something that's not possible with the current system. Uh, one way of doing this that I think would be kind of neat is just like, again, like this boss phases and spawning minions kind of thing, right? It's kind of like the same thing. It would be nice if we had a feature that when an enemy dies, it spawns a different enemy, right? So then you shoot down the boss, on the boss in first phase, that phase dies, and it spawns like a different boss that looks the same, but it's now a different phase, right? Yeah, I, I have ideas of how to implement these features. But I want to see if I really need those features because you know this is a Pico Gate game. We don't we don't need to do everything. We're gonna see what we need later on. But these are good suggestions from Turtle Quid. Yes, yes, yes. Wall of Schmups has been conquered. On to greater challenges. See you next time around, guys. Bye bye.